Hello everybody and welcome back to my playthrough of Scarlet Hollow. We will be finishing episode 3 today, so without further ado, let's get into it. Thank god you made it out, Megs. I went to get mom when I realized you hadn't left the library with the rest of us. I figured if anyone knew what to do, it'd be her. I see someone beat me to the punch. It sounds like you've had quite the evening. Rosalina's pain meds are in there. I hope Dr. Kelly is still awake. We'll need replacements right away, especially after everything that just happened. And we'll have to figure out where we're going to stay. Oh god, this was such a disaster. You and Rosalina can always stay with us, Mr. Oscar. That's a very kind offer, Alexis, but I'm afraid the stairs will be too much for Rosalina. And I wouldn't want to impose on your parents like that. It's just a lot to ask. I can figure this out. Okay, see, I'm not sure if they're aware of what happened. Because it said it was, like, using them as, like, puppets, but, like, was it actually? Because Wayne seems very convinced that, like, all that was a trick. Like, it was lying to me the entire time. I hope you're not mad at me for getting out of there. Of course not. It's just a house. We don't even own it. I'm not about to let you sacrifice years of your life for... A rental. Oh, so they do all know what happened. Cool, cool. Even if we owned the place, that ghost was asking for quite the down payment. Don't let your pride get in the way of a roof, Oscar. Are you sure you can't take up Alexis's offer? Oscar sighs. You're right, you're right. I'm gonna peace out. Back to back encounters with my own mortality, I've got a lot to ponder. See you, Rosalina. See you, Alexis. Zane walks off down the road. To think that ghosts are actually real. I mean, I know we don't have any hard evidence on us, but we all vividly experience the same thing. Stella's got, Stella's got to be over the moon right now. Where is Stella? I kind of thought she'd be excitedly rattling off theories by now. Oh, she's just standing there by herself. I doesn't like her. I is she okay? I was wondering the same thing. We just saw a ghost. She's just standing off by herself. Which, like, fair, that'd be a normal reaction from anyone else who had just seen a ghost, but this is Stella we're talking about. I'm gonna go check in with her. You walk over to Stella. Oh, hey, Megs. You okay? Sorry, I can't talk right now. See you later. Your is off down the road. Hmm. Should we go after her? She didn't seem okay. Stella. I think she just needs time to herself. Stella's never been the kind to share her burdens, and I doubt that'll change just because somebody goes chasing after her. If anything, it'd just make her climb up even more. She's a strong girl. She'll be okay. I'm honestly surprised that she and Zane are the only ones heading out right now. You've all been through something awful, and each and every one of you needs rest. Especially you, Kanika. You don't want that cold of yours to get any worse. Oh god, what a disaster this whole night has been. I had no idea it would turn out like this. I'm so sorry, everyone. Stop apologizing, Dad. We're the ones who don't have a house anymore. We don't even have the library. Were you all conscious that whole time? Everyone glances at each other. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we remember everything. At least up until that guy showed up and snapped us out of it. Wayne. He's been following Megs around. What did he say to you? You don't need to trouble Megs for any details. No one pay any mind to that man. He's just a drifter. He'll be gone soon enough. In the meantime, steer clear and he won't make trouble. There was another carving in there. I wonder if those things are tied to everything supernatural that's been happening. Yeah, I wonder. One is a coincidence, but two of them on back-to-back -back nights? And if you're right, and there's another in the clinic... I'm sorry, I'm a little lost. You've been finding carvings around town and they've been giving you visions? I'm sure everyone here could stand around theorizing about this all night long. There'll be plenty of time for that tomorrow. Megs, I'd love to discuss the, these visions over tea. What do we do about the library? You can always board it up until the ghost goes away, right? The mines were boarded up and that just made us want to go down there even more. We can't just let them. It's mega haunted. Even if folks believe us, they'll just make them want to investigate it for themselves. We'll say there's a gas leak. 
That should do the trick, at least for a while. Sybil, is there any chance that it goes away on its own? I'm not really authority on these things, but it doesn't seem interested in fading away. Okay, that's settled then. We board it up. We say there's a gas leak. And just hope no one gets curious, I guess. It's the best we can do for now. Do any of you know who you were supposed to be? No idea. There was no context, nothing. But there was a weird feeling. Like an overwhelming guilt. I was so angry. I was mostly just scared. I didn't feel any of those things. I felt... I don't know how to describe it. I felt powerful. What was it like being puppeted? They all glance away. It hurt. Why didn't I make the kids stay behind? I can't believe I let that happen to them. Dad, this might be the overwhelming pain and exhaustion talking, but shut up. I love you. None of this is your fault, okay? I had no idea what I was going to say until the words were already spilling out of me. I remember each and every one of them. It's like they were burned into my memory. You poor souls. I can't begin to imagine what you've all been through. I'm really sorry, Oscar. I'm really sorry, Rosalina. It's okay. Worst things have happened to people, and the price was just too high. We'll find a way to pick things up. I know you did everything you could for us, Megs. It probably was smart not to trust that ghost anyways. You wouldn't have to do it alone, Oscar. You can help yourself to whatever you need from the store. This is a good town full of good people, Megs. We won't let this ruin Oscar. We should probably get going. It's starting to get chilly out, and I don't want to keep Alexis's parents up too late. I'll be over later tonight, with some bedding and hot tea. I'll have Miles bring you groceries in the morning. Don't be a stranger, and let us know if you need anything, okay? Thank you. That really means a lot. I believe it's time for me to get my daughter home as well. But, Kanika dear, you haven't been feeling well. You need to get some rest. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow, Megs. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Cool. Kaniko wearily treks back to the general store. I'll walk you home after I finish getting Tanika her tea, and we can chat about what just happened. I'll just be a moment. You're too tired to say no. Sybil leaves. You make yourself comfortable for a few minutes while you wait. After everything that's happened tonight, the normalcy of sitting in a quiet, empty road feels like priceless treasure. I hope you don't mind, but I took the liberty to call your cousin and tell her what happened tonight. All of it? <laughs> she wasn't exactly thrilled to hear from me, but I think I blunted her anger as much as I could. Shall we head out for a walk? Time to go home. Once again, find yourself on the long trek back up to the estate. The night feels cold. The crunch of the leaves beneath you feel deafening in the quiet wilderness. Let's stop here for a bit. These old bones need a moment to rest. There are. And I'm afraid that they would still would be this numerous even if you had managed to exercise that spirit you encountered tonight. Its presence was merely a symptom of the, ro of the rot in this place rather than its cause. People are unfortunately going to have to get used to the sight of these things in the coming days. We didn't want to make a deal with the ghost. Of course he didn't. Some people never understand the kind of sacrifice that was laid upon the table tonight. If you'd gone through with the deal would have been an affront to everything he is. Are you a witch? She laughs, surprised by your question. I suppose some people might call me one, but I'm just an old woman who fancies herself a bit of a healer. What you call yourself isn't important, or more powerful than you let on. Well, I do drink plenty of tea. I'm so sorry, Megs. I completely forgot to send you home with some tonight. That's enough rest for me. Let's carry on for a bit. You and Sybil walk deeper into the woods. You're getting closer to the estate. One last rest and we'll get you home. Edwarden killed Charles Jr. But it feels like I'm the only feels like I'm only scratching the surface of things. What has my family done? Is that what the spirit showed you? Your family Your family built one of the most powerful coal empires in the Appalachia. Those sorts of things don't come without betrayal and bloodshed. These are all assumptions, of course. I'm just an old woman who enjoys her tea, and the Scarlet Empire is far older than these rattling bones. If you want the bloody details, I'm afraid you'll have to find them yourself. Sybil, what is Wayne? It's like I said, he's just a man. Who does she think you are? 
There's no way in hell that Wayne is just a man. We both know there's more to him than that. The smile briefly fades from her face. It's not exactly polite to share people's medical history. I may not have taken a Hippocratic Oath, but I still respect the privacy of others. I'm pretty sure that is not the same thing as HIPAA. <laughs> that doesn't mean you should trust him, though. Be careful with that one. There was a stone carving of a goat's head and a pack of wolves in the basement. There was something similar in the mines last night, too. A circle of arms and chains. Both of them gave me visions. What's there now? It's quite an interesting development. Perhaps we can discuss these visions over tea. My grandmother had a special blend that supposedly helped with dreams and visions. I'll be sure to have some ready by tomorrow. Maybe it'll help us piece things together. I don't know why, but I feel like Kanika and I aren't going to be ditching town tomorrow morning like we planned. Tea tomorrow sounds nice. Lovely. I'll be looking forward to it. Why can't I just go home? Like, to my real home? I'm afraid that this is your real home. It called to you, didn't it? Otherwise, you never would have gotten on that bus. Nobody really leaves the holler. At least not forever. Call it a quirk of the town. That seems like a curse. You're kidding, right? Of course I am. People leave town all the time. We just haven't been blessed with the most frequent public transport. Thank you for patiently waiting with an old woman, Megs. I feel spry like a spring chicken. You and Sybil trek through the remainder of the woods and you find yourselves at the outskirts of the estate. I'm looking forward to our chat tomorrow once you've had some time to rest. Good luck handling Tabitha. I tried to soften her up over the phone, but there's only so much softening you can do with someone that prickly. Bless her heart. Get a good night's rest, Max. You've earned it. Sybil heads back through the woods, leaving you alone to face Tabitha. You open the door to the estate as quietly as you can, only to find your cousin anxiously pacing the foyer. She's been waiting for you. So you finally came back. After last night, I thought we were done with all the running around and secrecy. I guess I was too optimistic. Do you know how stuff like this impacts me? Do you even care? We need to talk. Now's really not the time. Oscar's house was haunted by the ghost of Charles Shaw Jr., who was murdered by Edwardin Scarlet. It wanted years of my life to ex in exchange for leaving, but I wasn't about to give it what it wanted. Was there a gas leak in the library or something? Do you realize how ridiculous you sound right now? Didn't Sybil tell you what happened? Why don't we? Why won't you believe me? Sybil says a lot of things, Megs. For all I know, she was making stuff up to cover for you. She's nice like that. It's annoying. There was another one of those stones in Oscar's house. It gave me another vision. Like last night? That was gas. I'm sure whatever you thought you saw tonight was similar. Maybe you had another seizure. All the more reason you shouldn't run off and not tell me where you are. They've been telling me stuff about our family. I think we've done some terrible stuff, Tabitha. And all of that was probably in your imagination because they're hallucinating stemming from gas or, I don't know, your own guilt and exhaustion. City folk love to self-fagulate. <sighs> Who put them there? You expect me to know? They're probably some of the ancient artifact. I'm not, And I'm not an archaeologist. Have you been getting enough sleep? You sound a little delirious. What if they're what's making all this supernatural stuff happen? Okay, let's say for a second that there's some su something supernatural happening in town, and that these stones are causing it. What are we supposed to do about it? Run around and smash them? Rhetorical question, but I've also got news for you. One of them is buried under 20 tons of rock. Wayne followed me to Oscar's house. Do you think mentioning that awful man is supposed to garner sympathy from me or something? So you do know him. Did I ever say I didn't? He's a creep from a bad time in my life, and I do my best not to think about him. Which has become an increasingly difficult task. What is he? A sick man that you should avoid. If I could get him to stop talking to you, I would. He's not a, the decent man I used to know. You say nothing. Are we done? Great. I'm going to bed. Your cousin walks off, leaving you alone. You don't even notice yourself entering the guest room and falling into bed. Suddenly, you're just there, buried under your family's musty covers. Wednesday night, nearly half the week has passed since you first arrived in town, and a little over half a week remains until the bus comes to take you home. 
The spirit of Charles Shaw Jr. now commands the entirety of City Hall, a swirling void of wrath and despair that the people of this town will have to learn to ignore. Disaster looms its tallest yet over Scarlet Hollow. Okay, uh, I think that's where I'm going to call it for this recording, and I'm probably going to have to split it up into two parts. Where am I going to split it? I have no idea, because if I knew, I would have stopped the recording there, and then continued on in a different recording. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in episode four.